welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's so good to see you. I can't see you. I'm staring straight into a camera, but you know, thanks for swinging by. Anyways, today's topic, we're going over boom, boom, tuning. So I thought this was a good topic since we just got the car tuned. Uh, there's a couple things I want to touch on with the Subaru before we jump into it. So let's take a look. I want to talk about the Cobb fuel pressure regulator that we got and the uh, Cobb XLE bypass valve. Oh my gosh, I'm so washed out. Huh. Huh. I want to talk about the Cobb XLE bypass valve and the uh, Cobb FPR that we ended up getting while we were at Surge Line. So let's take a look. Bam. Here's our fuel pressure regulator kit from Cobb. So this is just a direct swap over. I'll sh we'll go over the uh, factory one here in a second. You'll see the rat's nest, what it was. But this is essentially just two lines, a uh, feed and return with one fuel pressure regulator located down, right down there on this uh, bracket that is provided. But honestly, the, uh, the fuel stumble fix makes a huge difference in the drivability of the car. I didn't even know this was an issue up until I got swapped out and I can genuinely feel a difference. So if you're looking to get tuned soon, highly recommend that uh, fuel pressure regulator on your STI or STI because it's not a WRX issue. But we got both those parts installed. The, uh, the quality of this bypass valve is really nice. I did not want to blow off valve. My car is not tuned on uh, speed density, so we stuck with a bypass valve. I do need to move my IAT sensor from my MAF over there up into this bung up here just because my car is getting so much heat soak from the uh, intake area that the readings from the MAF IAT are not consistent with what the front mount is actually doing. So moving that sensor up into this piping is going to give us a lot more of an accurate reading so that'll be uh, probably before the next tune but for the next tune we'll end up doing turbo, up pipe, header, the whole nine shebangs. So. Let's jump back in the garage and start going over some of the tuning aspects. Totally forgot to show you guys the uh, old fuel pressure regulator. So you've got your feed and return right there, and then you've got one, two, three. You have three fuel pressure regulators on this for some reason. Why? I don't know. It's a rat's nest of fuel lines. It's ridiculous, and I have no idea why they do this. But this is the cause of your whole fuel issue, and this was also the reason that my car kept throwing those lean efficiency codes, is because the car kept trying to stumble on that uh, base tune, so with this out, no longer an issue, so whoop. All right, well, you can stay there. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's talk tuning. So, there's essentially four types of tunes that you're gonna end up getting. A dyno tune, a street tune, an E-tune, or an OTS tune, which is, i.e. an access port and you're just downloading a map that's a, a generic map for generic modification. Now I wouldn't recommend going this route. It is a good temporary measure if you say, let's say you throw an intake on your car and you have an access port and you just need to get by for a little while before Pro Tune or anything like that. By all means, go for it. But don't be the guy that's longevity wise sitting on an OTS tune. I've made that mistake before on my 11 STI and it didn't end well. So just plan for the future and you don't have to get tuned right away it's something that you can do longevity wise you don't want to just do one one mod and then go get tuned get a bulk of mods um, if you review some of the videos that i did i did a whole bunch of parts at once i got a base map from my tuner threw it on the car and then we went and got pro tuned and it was a heap of different tunes aren't cheap either i think i ended up spending a total of about a thousand dollars when i was down at surge line which is not a, yeah, not a nice amount um, for a tune but then again it was also for some of the parts that i ended up needing for the car to get it tuned properly but it helps now street tunes are nice they're uh the tuner sits in the car they drive the car around the street to make adjustments on the fly this is generally with like tatrix cables or anything like that so it's older school tuning but it's, st it's still a great way e-tunes are good i've never had an e-tune that's been reliable so i'm not a big fan of them i know there's a couple people out there who do e-tunes and by all means if they work go for it i'm not saying don't do it if it works, go for it. But what exactly is tuning? Like we were talking about, we were throwing all these parts on the car, we threw injectors, big front mount on there, all these other parts that the car wasn't originally made for. So when we go to put the tune on or when we need to make adjustments to the car to account for those parts, essentially what we're doing is we're adjusting timing, uh, fuel, AFRs, everything. Everything that the ECU is doing to that car, the tuner is adjusting for us. So that way it runs properly at the best efficiency it can and the most reliable power that you can pull out of it. 
So if you need a tune, go get one. They're highly advisable. So the best time to get a tune is once you have all your parts surplused up. I generally would recommend getting everything done at once so that way you're not going back to the tuner multiple times on the same engine. Like I'm on stock blocks still and I'm going back one more time for headers, up pipe, turbo, external wastegate, probably a couple other little minor things. But for the most part, get all your mods done out of the way so that way you don't have to worry about doing it later multiple times. It saves you money and it saves time. For me, it was a three hour drive just down to go get tuned anyways. So take it as you will, but that's my recommendation. This is my fifth STI, so I've had enough of them to know the ins and outs of what to and what to not do. Um, that's why I built this one to be extremely reliable, which we're gonna have another video coming up on how to make the most reliable Subaru you can. It's really only gonna apply to EJ engines. Um, the FAs are similar. Um, most of what I'm saying will apply to FAs, but the direct injection engine is a lot different. You gotta do walnut blasting every 30,000 miles, make sure your high pressure fuel pumps are taken care of and maintained and whatnot. So it's good to make sure all that stuff is taken care of as well, but that's gonna be in a later video. So this one, I just wanted to touch on tuning a little bit. If anyone wants a more in-depth video of tuning itself, um, why to do it, where to get it done, all these other places, by all means, I'll do it. Just let me know down in the comments below and I'll, uh, I'll make whatever you guys want. These are for you, they're not for me. They're not for me, they're for you guys. I just enjoy making them, I enjoy editing them, so we're gonna do it. I'm gonna swap hats real quick, hold up. I got my sun hat on now. So, today's video wasn't a very long one. Um, I got some more parts coming on the way, like we were talking about earlier this week. I wanted to get those gauges ordered, so I hit up Brian at the Mod Garage. I got my AEM AFR and AEM boost gauges on the way with the SMY gauge cluster, so I'll do an install video of that. So that way you guys can install gauges if that's something you want to do as well. It's not too difficult. If you're familiar with wiring, then you should pick up on it relatively quick. If you're new to wiring, I'll walk you through it. It's no big deal. I got you. Anyways, I appreciate the time everyone spends on the channel. It helps me. It helps grow whatever I produce for you guys. If you guys have any suggestions on videos that you want, let me know. I'll gladly make them. These videos are for you guys and not me. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the page. If this video helped you out and you want more, smash that like button if you're into it. If not, I appreciate everyone swinging by. Peace out.